Sadly, the reason he hasn't so far, I believe, is because his mental faculties are too diminished right now to do what he did in 2011, to sit down and actually work together on a solution to the problems. Hmm. There was Texas Senator Ted Cruz questioning President Biden's mental capacity and his ability to negotiate a deal yesterday. A new report claims that there is growing concerns inside the White House that if the government fails to raise the debt ceiling, Americans will put all of the blame on President Biden and not on the GOP. Joining me right now is Florida Senator and member of the Senate Armed Services, Homeland Security and Budget Committees, Rick Scott. Senator, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Interesting that the White House is talking about who gets the blame rather than talking about what to do in the face of the debt ceiling limit. Well, that's D.C. for you. I mean, Joe Biden is the president of the United States. He should be leading the effort. Uh, we know we have a debt ceiling uh, issue June 1. He should be every day saying, you know, get everybody in he can to the White House, say, what's it going to take to get something done? The House Freedom Caucus came up with a plan. Kevin McCarthy passed a plan. House Republicans voted for a plan. And Joe Biden is missing in action. So yesterday, uh, 19 of us, we went and did a press conference in the Senate supporting what Kevin McCarthy is doing. Uh, Kevin McCarthy said, let's negotiate. Let's do something here that is structurally going to improve this country. Look, think about what the House did. They said, we're going to get people back to work. We're going to grow our economy. We're going to reduce regulation. And we're going to stop this massive spending and get rid of wasteful spending. That's pretty logical. So what's the problem that the Democrats have with this? They can't say it. They don't have a plan, but they just don't want to talk. They, all they're going to do, Schumer says, oh, we're just going to go trash the Republican plan with no plan to fix the debt ceiling. So what are you going to do in the Senate? Is the bill coming to the Senate? Uh, are, are, is there unity within the Republicans in the Senate? Do you think it passes or does it does Schumer just not do anything and, and talk a lot and do nothing? Well, yesterday, you know, we organized 19 of us went out and, and went to outside and said we support what Kevin McCarthy is doing. Unfortunately, Chuck Schumer is doing nothing. He's not he won't bring the bill to the floor. All he's trying to do is he told the Democrats just go try to trash what the Republicans are doing instead of doing something productive. So I'm going to continue to talk to everybody I can on the Democrat side, say what can we do to make sure we raise the debt ceiling, but we start acting responsibly. We have thirty one and a half trillion dollars of debt. We've got massive inflation. Interest rates are up because because of in, because of this inflation. So let's we've got to solve this for the poorest families in this country that are struggling with gas prices and food prices and housing prices. We've got to figure this out for the American public. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, people are so on to this, Senator. People understand that politics has gotten involved in everything and they are sick of it because this They're is a serious it. issue. People are sick of it. They're also sick of the wide open border. Title 42 is set to expire in about a week. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas will be at the Rio Grande Valley sector today. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents are now being asked to work seven days a week. A memo also says, quote, due to operational needs, scheduled leave may be canceled at any time. Senator, I know you're going to also go to the border. You've been there a ton of times. What are you expecting? I'm going again tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to try to see if what, what we need. I mean, if Joe Biden did what I did and did what other Republicans have done, go to the border, you could see what we need. Okay, and by the way, he's sending these troops down there. Now, this is after 70,000 people have died of fentanyl. We've got criminals coming across the border, terrorists coming across the border, Chinese spies coming across the border. My workers keep saying the border's secure. So here's my question for him. When you send all these troops down there, are they to process more illegal, illegal immigrants to come into this country? Or is it actually to do his job, secure the border, enforce the law? We have to have a border. Uh, I mean, finish the wall. Put the, the, tr the stuff we spent while Trump was president for the technology. I mean, there, we have laws. We can enforce our laws. But Mayorkas and Biden have said, nope, we're going to have a completely open border. We don't care that 70,000 Americans are dying of fentanyl. We don't care that criminals are coming and terrorists are coming. That's the attitude that Biden and Mayorkas have right now. How sick. You know, it is really extraordinary how far this country has fallen in just the two short years. When you take a look at the economic issues like inflation, like recession on the horizon, uh, or you take a look at foreign policy issues like the wide open border, like China, America is not being taken seriously on the global stage. 
The Wall Street Journal's Jerry Baker with an op-ed. We talked about this yesterday uh, about what will drive voters toward President Trump. And, and, and frankly, he writes Trump could win if people vote their pocketbooks. He writes the Trump calculation has always been that voters will accept the evident flaws in the man's character and behavior as the price for turning out a party that is literally impoverishing them. The Democrats have to hope the national conversation never gets back to economics. Senator, is the conversation back to economics? It will be. I mean, this is not getting better. I mean, think about the difference. When Trump was president, we had a good economy, we had a secure border, and we're in a, we weren't at war around the world. Look at where we are now. Look at look at where the economy is going. Look at the inflation. Look at our border. So a Republican will win, right? And so if Joe Biden stays as pre, stays as president and runs for re-election, I mean, I, a Repu we will have a Republican president, a Republican House, and a Republican Senate. People are fed up with their they, their buying power goes down every month with this president. I mean, if wages are not staying up with inflation. And it, I mean, I just don't I don't get what Biden's trying to do other than destroy this country. Well, look, you're on the Senate Homeland Security uh, Committee, and people want to know why uh, we have so many threats. I mean, the communist China threat uh, is in plain sight, and yet we have questions on whether or not Joe Biden is, you know, a compromise. Uh, we're waiting on the DOJ and the FBI to provide this memo that apparently the whistleblower says uh, puts Joe Biden right in the middle of the influence peddling scheme where he accepted money from a foreign national and, and made a policy decision on, on behalf of America in response. Now you've got a Canadian lawmaker accusing a Chinese diplomat in Toronto of running a harassment campaign against his family, saying that the government turned a blind eye to it and that they knew about it for two years, did nothing. Lawmakers in the country are pushing Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to launch an investigation into Chinese election meddling. It's exactly what John Ratcliffe told me on Sunday. He's expecting for 2024. Are you ready for it? Are you ready as a leading senator? Uh, from Florida uh, for the Chinese Communist Party to start interfering in America's election? Well, unfortunately, in the, in the Senate, we got to get the Democrats to show up. I mean, yesterday we had a vote on whether we're going to enforce our trade laws. We, we passed legislation that says if you are making Chinese solar panels with slave labor, you can't import them in the country. Joe Biden gave them a two-year waiver, all right? And guess what? Democrats, you know, 41 Democrats voted yesterday to say that's okay that they, they China can make this with slave labor and you can import it in this country because Joe Biden told them oh we're going to give you a two year waiver I mean the Democrats and Joe Biden have got to start standing up but there's something wrong here Joe Biden continues to pacify the Chinese I don't know what they have on him but every day it's something that he pacifies the Chinese we've got to get to the bottom of this understand exactly what his relationship and Hunter Biden's relationship is with the Chinese government yeah I mean look uh that's what we're talking about every day. The, one of the first decisions Joe might, Biden made as president was to cancel the China initiative. And that initiative was actually indicting people who were taking money from Beijing and sending uh, intellectual property back to, the, back to uh, Beijing from America. Senator, we're going to keep a spotlight on this. Thanks very much for your time today. We so appreciate Thanks, your work.